All right, we're building a new enclosure for our pheasants, so I'm gonna take you step by step how I do this. We're gonna build it with greenhouse bows. So the first step is to lay out where you're gonna build your enclosure. We're building a 12 foot wide by 32 foot long enclosure for our pheasants. So you can see I have flags. I have one there, one there, and one at the opposite corners. I've already measured those out and squared them up. So now what I'm gonna do is just drive some stakes in the ground and pull a string and mark each place I'm gonna have a greenhouse bow into the ground. And then I'm gonna take a steel rod and drive down in there to make sure I have enough dirt to support the greenhouse bows. We have rock pretty close to the soil here, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to build our enclosure right here. So the first thing I wanna do is pull some strings and go down through there and make some checks, check my four corners, and make sure I can get them in deep enough into the ground check everywhere, every four feet that I'm going to have a greenhouse bow. So that's what I'm fixing to do now is go ahead and drive some stakes in the ground, pull a string, and check and make sure that I can build my enclosure here. All right, I have my strings pulled. I'm going to get a tape measure and measure out and take some paint marking tape and mark everywhere there's gonna be a bow on both sides and then take a, a steel rod and drive it down in the ground and see how far I get before I hit solid rock. I don't wanna to get too far along and then realize I can't build right here. Another thing I wanted to mention, this ground slopes a little bit, which isn't that big a deal for a pheasant pen or a chicken pen or any kind of fowl pen. But now if I was building a greenhouse, I would level this ground out so that way you have level ground inside your greenhouse. Since it's just a pen for our pheasants, I'm not going to worry about that right now. But I'm going to get a tape measure. I'm going to do some measuring and some paint marking. Well, I have me a steel rod. I made me a mark at 18 inches. As long as I can get 18 inches down on the ground, I'll be happy with these. This isn't going to have plastic on it like it does, like you do with a greenhouse. I'm going to put netting over the top. I'm going to put four foot chicken wire on the sides up and then netting over the rest of it. So it's not going to have as much pressure as a greenhouse would, especially in heavy winds, because the netting is going to let the air and the chicken wire is going to let the air go right through it. So as long as I can get 18 inches down, I'm good. If you have plenty of dirt in your area, you can skip this step. All right, they're all good except for at 20 feet and 24 feet. The one at 20 feet, I hit a rock and I could feel it bouncing a little bit. So I think it's just a small rock I could probably dig out with a shovel. The one at 24 feet felt pretty solid, so I'm not sure what's going on with it. I went down about eight inches before I hit it. So I'm gonna have to get a shovel and dig that out and see. But before I do, I'm gonna check this other side and make sure there's no problems there because if there's a problem on this side, then there's there isn't any sense of me putting any more time or effort into this. Okay, this side tested out good, all but at 16 feet. And at 16 feet, I went down about six to eight inches and hit rock again. I think it's a smaller rock, but I'm gonna have to get a shovel and check it. So I have one on this side and two rocks on this side. I think that's worth digging it and spending a little time and digging them up and see if I can get those rocks out of the way because I really want to build my pheasant's pen right here. All right, well, I took a shovel and I checked the 20 and 24 foot uh, marks. I hit rock when I drove my rod down in there, so I took a shovel and checked it, and that is a big rock. I think that's all one rock that goes under that way. I checked four feet back that direction, four feet that direction, four feet that direction, and four feet this direction, and I hit the same rock. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's the same rock. So what I think I'm gonna do, since that's the only two bad spots on this side, I think I'm gonna go ahead and put the rest of my poles in and go ahead and put those in. They're about eight inches of dirt, six to eight inches of dirt. So I think I'm gonna put them in after I get my bottom plate on, my pressure treated plate all the way down through there. I may come back and dig down to the rock on the inside and maybe put a couple bolts in those and then concrete them and then let that set before I put my bows on them. Um, I really want to build that this pin for the pheasant right here so it's easy to tie into my electric here. This is their old pin. It'll be a quick easy move for them. Uh, the pin itself is going to be running east-west so that's south so they'll get plenty of good sunlight in the, in the 
winter time. So I think that's what I'm going to do since only those two um, are hit and rot. I think once I put my pressure treated boards on the bottom and bolt them to it, then I can dig them out and pour some concrete and I think it'll hold just fine. Okay, after taking my laser level and checking, it's roughly seven inches of drop and that 12 feet. From this corner to that corner, it's less than an inch difference. And from this corner to that corner, it's exactly the same. So I'm gonna have to take and figure out how long my poles need to be on this side and how much taller they need to be on this side. So if it's seven inches difference, then if I want the top of my poles to be even, and I do, that means these poles need to be seven inches higher than these on this side, the north poles do. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut them all seven inches longer and still put my marks at 18 inches and drive them 18 inches into the soil. And then that way they'll be even on both sides and straight across, it'll all be level. And I'll drive them in the ground and then I'll take my two bys that I'm gonna use for my bottom plate, my pressure treated two bys, and I'll bolt them to all of them all the way around. Okay, that has my first set level. I actually started with the second bow back so that way I could leave my strings here and it wouldn't be affected by the corners. I'll do the four corners last. I'll go ahead and put these pipes in all the way down. That worked out well cutting these seven inches longer and still driving them 18 inches down in the ground. That worked out exactly level from that one across to this one. So now I'm gonna do that all the way down and then I'll do my four corners. <laughs> too bad of shape. I just have one on this side that didn't make it down to level so I'll probably just end up cutting it off because it, it still went quite a few inches down in. It's probably about two to three inches shy of being 18 inches so I think it'll be all right. And then I have the two on this side that the rock was too big for me to dig out. So I'll just go ahead and put my pressure treated two bys on the bottom. And after I bolt them on, I'll dig that out and I'll concrete those in, let them set a day before I attempt to put bows on them. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Yesterday I started bending the bows for our pheasant hoop house. Uh, you can see on this one, this is the first one I did and I made a mistake on the swagged in and I'll show you when I get over here to the tractor we're going to bend some more bows to finish out this hoop, hoop house for the pheasants. But I'll show you what I did, what mistake I made on bending this one. And then you can see the second one's not quite as bad. And then the third one I done, I changed the way I did things and it worked out great. So I'm gonna show you how I did the, the third one, how I'm gonna do the rest of these. Uh, but these first two I made a mistake on, which isn't that big a deal because this is a pheasant hoop house. This is to house our pheasants. Now, if this was a greenhouse that I was building, then I probably wouldn't use them. I'd set them aside and uh, use them on a hoop house for chickens or for pheasants or for peacocks or something like that. All right, we're gonna bend some bows for our pheasant hoop house. Uh, this would be the same for a greenhouse. I have a bow bender. This one is a DY-12. I also have a DY-20, so when we go to build our greenhouse, I'll use the 20 foot. But this is a DY-12. I bought these at buildmyowngreenhouse.com. Now they have several videos on their website on how to do this, plus they have PDF instructions. So if you order one of these, I strongly encourage you to go to their site and download their PDF instructions. Uh, but this is the best way that I figured out how to do it. I mounted them to the forks of my tractor. I did have to put a couple of one bys and a two by underneath this end to hold it. I just used a piece of plywood, three quarter inch plywood to put behind my forks. I'm gonna use that for now. But 
Before I build the next one, I'm gonna take me a piece of either quarter inch flat stock by two inches or three eighths inch flat stock by two inches and cut a piece that'll fit behind my forks. And that'll just make this a little bit stronger and I won't have to worry about having blocks at this end. But for now, this is gonna work good. Now in their instructions, they say to make a mark at six inches from your swagged end and six inches from the other end. I didn't find that helpful. Now you may find it helpful. I didn't find it helpful. I just slide the end roughly six inches and that's close enough for what I'm doing. But what I'm doing different than what they do on their instructions is, they send a cheater bar or they call it a lever bar that's like this. Uh, you can see one end smaller than the other. This is for the swagged end, uh, or I'm sorry, this is for the swagged end. You slide it on and you finish your bend to do the finishing bend. And this is for the other end, the smaller piece that goes inside uh, your inch and three eighths tubing. Well, what I did whenever I bent that very first one that I showed you that was uh, messed up, I kinked the swagged in. I'd put this on and up to the swag, and when I want to make my final bend, that's when I kinked it. So I don't know what I did wrong, whether I put too much pressure on it. Uh, I thought I was just putting enough pressure to get it down to the bender on this end. But I come up with a different solution. On the third one I bent, I just took a piece of uh, inch and a quarter conduit, and that's the pieces that I have in the ground. This is a piece I had left over from it. And I just slide this right over, and it goes right over top of the swagged in, no problem. So that way I don't have to worry about kinking my swag on it. Another thing, when you mark five inches from this end of your bender, so that way you can, when you run this pole up, you'll run it to right there and bend it to there. And that's called your finishing bend. So I'll show you how I use these, how I use both of them and uh, we'll go ahead and bend a couple bows. Okay, before we get started bending the first bow, I did want to show you something on this. On the end of each pole, I put a small vertical red line with a Sharpie. I don't know if you can see that if the camera's focused on it, but I put a line this way, so that way as I'm bending this bow, I can keep it straight in line, because if not, you'll get it, it'll corkscrew on you. So you have to keep it straight in line. Now. The PDF instructions in most of the videos show a big table or people using their trailer and they mount this laying flat on the trailer. They mount the bender on the trailer and then they use small pieces of plywood about a half inch thick strips of it to keep the bow straight as they're bending it um, flat horizontally. But I didn't want to build a table dedicated to just this piece of equipment, just this bowing because to bend these bows, because uh, most of them use two four by eight sheets of plywood. It's large, the tables are large, or you have to screw plywood down to your trailer. And I have a 16 foot trailer and I could do that, um, but I just didn't see any sense in it. it to, me, since I had the, to me, since I had the tractor with the front end loader, I just thought it made more sense to make something to go on the front of this. That way I can raise it up and, and bend them this way. I just used two pieces of all thread with a nut and I had some of these square washers uh, put on them. They're good thick quarter inch washers. And so that holds it pretty good. It does wiggle a little bit being plywood behind it. But once I build the final um, one out of either quarter inch or three eighths flat stock by two inches, I, I don't think it'll budge at all. So let's go ahead. We'll go ahead and bend a couple bows and I'll show you how I do it. Now the first thing I do, like I said, they say to stick it in roughly six inches through the end of the hoop bender. But the main thing is I want to make sure on this far end that I have my line in line with the, the bender. Okay, let's go ahead and bend the pole. Get my red mark where I need it. Put it just roughly six inches. Like I said, it, marking them seemed like a waste of time to me, but if you want to mark them, by all means, go ahead and mark them. Then you make your first bend, and you pull it all the way down to where it touches. You slide it about 12 to 15 inches. You can feel kind of when it grabs. 
and then make your next bend. And the whole time I'm keeping this straight as I can so I don't get it corkscrewed. Now when I get up here to the short, this is when I use my piece of conduit. I just slide it over the end and bend it down. Slide it up another 12 to 15 inches. Bend it down. Now this is where I was talking about the five inch mark. This is gonna be the finishing bend. So I'll slide it, the end of it, almost to the end of it, almost to the mark. I'll make this bend. And then I'll slide it all the way to the end. And I'll make the last bend. Now this is where I bent the swagged in, doing this final bend. And I found, since if I use this piece of conduit, I don't crimp them. So then what I do is I'll pull them back out and I turn it around. And then I do the exact same thing. I just come through here and it's a lot easier just to bend it. But I found if I just slide it through six to 10 inches at a time, I can get a nice smooth bend and a nice curve to it. Okay, now here's the finishing bend. The tool they send only goes up to where the swag is and that's how I bend it. So by using this, I can slide it all the way up and I can make this finishing bend without having to worry about kinking my swag. Okay, after I do that, then I lay them both down side by side and I see how they look. And they should be pretty close together. So let me show you. I'll take you over here. And I'll show you what they look like. So when you lay them both down, they should match up pretty close. Of course, your inside ones, the diameter's a little bit different because it's laying inside, but if they're on top of each other, like that, you can see that's almost perfect. Okay. So now what I did yesterday is I took and leaned them up against the, the chicken coop and the peacock coop. And then I put a self tapping screw in the center of them. But I think today this ground's pretty flat. I think I'm going to try just laying two of them together laying them down, putting them together, and putting a self-tapping screw. We'll try that and see how it works. Like I said yesterday, I put uh, these bows up against the side of the chicken coop to keep them good and straight when I put a self-tapping screw in. Uh, but today, this ground looks pretty level right here. If you were building a greenhouse, you would have a level floor where you leveled your floor for the greenhouse and you could lay these on them and get a good flat surface. Or you could lay a couple pieces of plywood out. But I think for our purposes today, this is going to work fine. I'm just going to put a self-tapping screw in there, and that'll hold the bow together. And we'll go over here and we'll put it in the pheasant coop. And we'll go over here and we'll put it in the pheasant coop. All right, let's go ahead and install one of these. I'll put this swagged in in first. And we'll tilt him up. Now, what I would normally do is go ahead and put a self-tapping screw in here, but I'm gonna wait and get the other end and I'll show you how we do the other end. Okay, you can see how far off this is. When you bend these, you don't want them right at 12 feet. You want them at about 13 or 14 feet. I forget what it says in the PDF. Um, but where I have these attached, I'm going to go ahead and take that self-tapping screw out 
And once I put this end in, I have a mark at six inches. Then I'll go ahead and put the self-tapping screw back in. It'll hold the bracket and it'll hold this pole. So we're gonna push this down and bend it until it goes in there. And then we're gonna push it down to our mark. That way they're all even all the way across. And then I'm gonna put the self-tapping screw back in. Okay, and then we'll come to this side and put this self-tapping screw back in. All right, that has our bow installed. Now we'll come back and we'll use a piece of half inch conduit across the ridge cap. And then I have pressure treated one by fours I'm gonna put on the sides. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because I'm gonna have chicken wire on the bottom part of this. So I'll have one by fours across through here that I can hook my chicken wire to. And then we'll have netting across the top of it. So we can hook our netting to the one by four also. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and finish these bows out, get the rest of them in today. Then I'm gonna seal all my one by fours and seal these two by fours before I put the chicken wire on it and before I put the netting on it. in I got my bows plumbed up used the level plumbed them up I used just some metal poles that I had laying around these poles I bought probably 20 years ago I gave a nickel a piece for them and I just took them in the shop and put one over to the anvil and took a ball peen hammer and flattened them out good and then drilled a hole in them so that way I could mount them so that worked well that gives it some stability but right now I'm gonna go around everywhere these bows go into the ground pieces I'm gonna go ahead and put some silicone around that. That way water won't get down in there. The bottom of these are hollow, so it shouldn't matter that much, but still just to make sure I don't want any water getting in there and freezing and busting them. And that'll just make them rust that much quicker. So I'm gonna go around all these bows and just put a bead of clear silicone on them. to show you where we're at right now have the netting stretched across and temporarily stapled on both sides you can see right here we just temporarily staple it and then on this end I just temporary I have zip ties on it so I did the same on the other side have it stapled to the one before on the other side. Now we'll come back and on the bottom part here between this one by four and that two by four, we're gonna put chicken wire and turn it out about 18 inches to two foot at the bottom down here on the ground and then we'll pile rocks on top of that. And then I'll run two strands of electric, one up top here by this one by four and one on the bottom by the two by four. So that way any predators that try to come in, small predators will hit the bottom one, hopefully bigger predators, but if they try to stand up, then they'll hit the electric wire on the second run. 
and then of course we'll have the netting now one thing i wasn't going to put netting on this end because i am going to put metal metal roofing from this bow all the way to this bow i'll have metal roofing on it and that'll be like their little coop to get in out of the weather but I thought if one of the pieces of metal blew off, because this is a real high wind area, this is north, that, that direction is. And besides this little patch of trees that I left here on the bluff, uh, there's nothing to stop the wind. You can see for miles and miles that direction. And there's nothing at all to stop the wind. So I was worried if a piece of this metal blew off, then my pheasants could get out. So that's why I went ahead and ran netting the whole way and I'll put my metal right over top of this netting. So now what we wanna do is get her run a chicken wire and we'll staple it the same way. And then once I get the chicken wire up, then we'll come back and we'll put screws in that hold the netting and the chicken wire at the same time. And then we'll put screws in the bottom that hold the chicken wire in the bottom. And then we'll do the ends. Okay, let me show you where we're at now. I have the chicken wire stapled to the top one by four and to the bottom two by four, all the way down through here. Show you a little closer here. You can see I have staples in there. Have it turned out almost two feet here. It's about 18 inches or so. So now we'll bring rocks in and put rocks on this and let this grass grow up through the chicken wire. And then we'll put a strand of electric down here at the bottom and we'll put a strand of electric at the top here on this one by four all the way down through there. Now that I have that done, I'm gonna do the other side, put the chicken wire on it, and then we'll come back in and we'll put screws and screw the chicken wire in. Of course, right now, you can see there's a staple, there's a staple, there's a staple. So we have staples about every four to six inches, two to three of them. One here, one up there, one here, one up there. You can see I just randomly go down low and then up high and then some in the middle. Do the same thing up here. You can see there's staple there, staple there. So the wire is over top of the netting, so that way nothing can get up under the netting. Of course, if anything gets up this high, it's going to hit this strand of electric here, hopefully. And the predators won't try to get it. And then, of course, the netting goes all the way across the top, all the way to the other side. So now we'll put chicken wire on the other side. pheasant coop is pretty much done hoop house I have the metal on for the coop part uh, you can see I went over part of it and closed it I have the chicken wire we still have to put rocks all along here but we'll go pick up rocks out of the field I have the netting on it the chicken wire comes up to the one by four and then netting to the other side to the one by four. You can see we just put an old storm door on it that we got for free. This metal we got for free. Um, it was coming off an old barn, which it's pretty rusty, uh, but it still has several years life left in it. So that's why I got it. And I figured I'd use it for stuff like this, just for coops. I wouldn't use it on anything um, that I was really worried about water leaking in, but it's perfect for a pheasant hoop house. As you can see, still have some cleanup to do the ends where the netting was we just zip tied those because this spring I'm gonna add on I'm gonna add some more 
length to this to where I can separate some of my breeding pairs uh, or breeding trios of pheasants. So I left the netting. I could have cut this off nice and neat and screwed it to it, but I left that so that way I can tie it in when I expand. And then of course, the corners we have all screwed in. I still have to come back and put screws on the one by fours and I still have to come back and put screws on the two by four on the bottom to hold the chicken wire. But that's all I lack. Everything else is done. You can see my wife's already started uh, collecting rocks, but her and I got this coop built. It took us several days to build it because we couldn't work on it um, uh, all at once, but her and I were able to get everything finally finished today. And this is the end. We just put metal on it and an old storm door. I still have to do a latch for the door. I have a piece of one by that's going to go down that edge and I'll hook the, the latch to it. But it's pretty much done. So now I just got to get feeders and waters in there. I still have to get uh, two strands of electric around. But I'm going to do that real quick this evening. I have all my insulators ready. Shouldn't take me just a few minutes to go ahead and put the electric around it and get it tied in. But if you have any questions about this build, about building a hoop house for chickens or pheasants or any kind of fowl, or even pigs or goats, uh, leave it in the comments below. But if you want to learn more about homesteading, living off grid, organic gardening, click the subscribe button down below and the notification bell. That way you'll be notified when we post new videos. And again, thanks for watching. Well, we're done with the pheasant hoop house. Got our electric. Still have to finish putting rocks down. As you can see, the pheasants are in it. I put a couple of concrete blocks here for tonight. Tomorrow we'll get the tractor in the bucket and go around and pick up some rocks. Put a few roosts inside for them. I just went and cut a couple maple trees. I don't know if you can see them back there, but there's roost in each corner. And then on this end, I did the same thing. I am going to build some nesting boxes for them, put inside. But for now, we have the two strands of electric, one strand down low and one strand up high. Hopefully, it'll keep the predators out. But they seem to like the new habitat. If you have any questions about this build, the soup house, or comments, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.